Amen? Are you a rose among the thorns? Or you're the thorn among everyone's side? Wag naman sana. Right? Remember, Jesus died for them too. Amen? How can the world see the church as relevant or desirable if we are putting each other down or tearing each one apart? We're supposed to love each other, support each other, strengthen each other, especially in the midst of our difficulties. We're not called to judge each other. We're called to love each other. Amen? Only God can judge. But see, in John chapter 3, verse 17, it says, God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world, but to what? To save the world through Him. He gives us salvation first. If you reject that salvation, then you will be judged. If the one that we are supposed to follow, Jesus, loves the world, does not condemn us, but in fact gives us the world, uh, gives us a chance to be saved, how can we ourselves could not be gracious enough to extend a helping hand, to give a loving correction, and to be gracious to each other. Amen? As the disciple of Jesus, we are supposed to be known by our love for one another. That's proof positive that we are indeed true disciples. And that's what Levi did. Who's Levi? The tax collector, Matthew. In Mark chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but um, it says here, the day that Levi met Jesus, Levi held a meeting at his house to introduce others to Jesus. When Jesus called him to follow him, he was so changed that that same night, Bible study sila. Praise God. That's how excited he was. And who was with him in that meeting? Other than Jesus, huh? The other tax collectors, the scum, Sabirito. When the teachers of the religious law saw, law who were Pharisees, saw Jesus eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with such scum? Mawalang kwed ng tao. But see, that's the heart of Jesus. Ano sa ng Panginoon? Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Amen? Sino pong makasalanan? Jesus came for each and every one of us. The greatest evangelism tool that we have is our testimony. What is your experience with Jesus? Did he deliver you? Did he heal you? Did he restore you? Did he show you a miracle, a sign, a wonder? Did he change your life? Amen. All of the above. Praise God. Then share that with everyone around you, especially those who don't know the Lord yet. Share it with your brothers and sisters in Christ so that they may be encouraged, but more so, share it with others who don't know Jesus so that they may be saved. Mark chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. In verse 17 says, Jesus called them and said, Come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. As we follow Jesus, we become more like him. The more we become more like him, the greater our love for others become. The greater our love for others becomes, the more the world sees and hears about Jesus. We are called for a greater and higher purpose. It's no longer just about doing our job. It's about doing it for the Lord. Amen? It's no longer just attending to your patient. It's having compassion and love for them, praying for them, and bringing them into a relationship with Jesus. Amen? That's the come and follow phase. We start relating to each other the way Jesus would. We relate to the world the way Jesus would. It's not what would Jesus do, but instead, what Jesus did. Amen? What did Jesus do to you? He saved us. He restored us. He healed us. He rejuvenated us. Hold on to that and share it with others. Three phases of discipleship. The first one is discovery. Come and see. 
The second one is relating. Come and follow. And the third one, is committing. Come and be. Amen? Come and be is the third and final stage in discipleship. This is the period of committing, a time of becoming who we are called to be. As we grow in the Lord and in commitment to the body of Christ, greater opportunities for ministry are opened. In Mark chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Afterward, Jesus went up on the mountain and called out the ones he wanted to go with him, and they came to him. Mark is emphasizing that the choice of apostles has its origins in Jesus' determined purpose. Pinili sila ng Panginoon. In short, it was an intentional decision. These 12 were chosen for God's divine purpose, and Jesus is preparing them for a time of equipping. In Mark chapter 3, 14 to 15, it says, Then he appointed 12 of them and called them his apostles. They were to accompany him, him, and he would send them out to preach, giving them authority to cast demons. As I said earlier, there's somebody who had millions of followers. Jesus has hundreds of followers in his time when he went from place to place. But Jesus chose, out of his many followers, he chose how many? Twelve. He chose twelve to be his apostles. An apostle means somebody who is a messenger or authorized representative, as I shared before. He did not choose these twelve to be his associates and companions because of their faith. Their faith often faltered, right? What did Peter do? He saw Jesus, he stepped out of the boat, but as soon as he stepped out, he faltered. He, st- he fell into the water. He sank in. Then what else did he do? On the night that Jesus was going to be going to, uh, to the courts, he denied him three times. He was not perfect, but God saw him as perfect because of his because of the righteousness of Jesus. Jesus didn't choose the twelve because of their talent and ability. When Jesus went to all these different cities, he wasn't, yes, most, most of the time he was near the water, but they weren't fishing. They were not fishing for fish. They were fishing for what? For men. Jesus showed them how to fish for men. The disciples represented a wide range of backgrounds and life experiences. May matanda, may bata, may matangkad, may, ba, may ano, yan. May payat, may katulad ni Pastor Mike, yan. Iba-iba po. God does not look at the outside appearance. God does not look at our accomplishment. When He calls us, He, what? Equips us. All He wants from us, and this is the same from the 12 disciples, is the one characteristic that everyone should share as a disciple of Christ is what? The willingness to obey Jesus Christ. You must be willing to obey Jesus Christ. After Jesus ascended to heaven, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered to carry out special roles in the growth of the early church. Being a good disciple is not, a, it's not just a matter of following Jesus, but we follow him with a willing heart. You must be willing because as we follow him, God will mold us and shape us. And sometimes it will hurt because we are so used to doing old things, old ways. But God will new, shape us into a new form to somebody like him, giving us a great plan, a great purpose in our life. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what? Pleases Jesus. What do we do when we don't feel like obeying? Right? This morning, if you didn't feel like going out, you would have stayed in, in your house. See, God did not leave us alone in our own struggles to do His will. He wants to come alongside of us and be within us to help us well. God helps us to desire to obey him and then give us the power to do his will, what he wants. 
The secret to a changed life is to submit to God's control and to let Him work. So the next time God asks us to do something, we should desire to do it. Seek His will and desire to do it. To be like Christ, we must train ourselves to think like Christ. We must change our desires to be more like Christ. We need the power and indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the influence of faithful Christians, your brothers and sisters, our obedience to God's word and sacrificial sacrifice or service, sacrificial service. I'm so blessed because this morning, despite the snow and the delay, you know, you guys were here. Amen. You wanted to hear more from God. You wanted to experience him today. And you are so blessed because you are here. And God is going to use that in your life so that you can bless others as well. So don't get stuck in the come and see and discovery phase, just sitting and listening. Don't get stuck in just sharing your testimony when it's convenient. But be intentional. Come and follow. If you don't know what to do, just open up your life manual. Tapo manual natin, the Bible. Amen? Ngayon, digital na nasa phone. Praise God. God's holy scriptures and His word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God and useful for what? For teaching, for correcting, for preparing and equipping for every good work that God has called us to do. Come and be face, or the committing face, is when we join hand in hand, walking with Christ and doing what God has called us to do. And what is his promise? If we get in his word, he will train us and equip us. Amen? That's why we need to soap up every day. That's why we need to be here every Sunday. That's why with my discipleship group, we need to meet regularly. And then in your life groups, you, meet to meet, you need to meet regularly. Because this is how we feed. This is how we get stronger. This is how we train. Can you imagine if I was called to... Di pa naman ako tinatawagan ni Brother Manny, pero imagine me fighting with Brother Pacquiao. Oh, he trains and everything and I don't. I just eat and watch TV. Yeah. Sino mananalo? Pagpapray lang natin na manalo si Pastor Mike. No. You need to train. You need to strengthen yourself. You need to be prepared to fight the battle. Yes, the battle has already been won. But if you don't know how to fight, then you will lose. Use the Word of God, the inspired Word of God, to prepare us, to equip us, to do every good work. We are to proclaim and preach the good news and of God's grace, but it doesn't stop there. God's Word is powerful. It teaches, it rebukes, it corrects, and it changes lives, and it sets us free. Amen? It's practical and applicable in our lives today because we can use it to raise our children. No. Read the Word and apply it in your life. We use it for relating with our spouse. The Word of God says, respect your husband. Susundin ba natin yun? The Word of God says, love your wife. Susundin ba natin yun? Amen. The Word of God says, honor those who has authority over you. Kahit hindi mo mahal yung boss mo, i-honor mo. Praise God. Amen. And it finds, gives us the direction in our life. All of us have sins and some may have been oppressed by curses and demons and such. How do we know? It's because we can't break free of a certain addiction. But we can break free of those demons. Amen? By reading the word of God and also by having the authority that Jesus gave us. It says here, they were to accompany him and he would send them out to preach, giving them what? Authority to cast out demons. Ika nga, level up na tayo. Hindi lang come and see. Hindi lang come and follow. We will come and be. Before you, before, dati, you're the, only, you're the one who's always needing to be prayed for. Now, you're the one seeking to pray for others. Amen? 
Before you're always thinking about yourself and now you're seeking to help others. Before